Choices, choices, choices. That's what makes America, but sometimes choices can get us into trouble. You are listening to Wealth Talks, and today you get to hear about choices, the choices that you can make to keep more of the money that you make, and you also get to hear about how Burger King outwitted McDonald's. So does that mean that we get to choose between McDonald's and Burger King? <laughs> well, maybe. You'll get to find out here in a little bit. If you enjoy listening to the uh, to wealth, the wealth talks that we do here on the podcast, you will love coming on the Wealth Cruise. We're doing that here later this year, October 19th through the 20th. We'll be leaving out of Fort Lauderdale, cruising through the Eastern Caribbean. We'll be talking about different aspects of wealth, how to keep more of the money you make. We'll be talking taxes, a strategy, and Chris Donham will also be there talking about um, another aspect to wealth, you know, more more from the intellectual aspect, how how you think, how that determines uh, your wealth. And also uh, Dr. John Bergman will be there talking about the health aspect of wealth. So all in all, it's going to be a wonderful time uh, to join us. We'll, we'll have the link here and the resources to the podcast, or you can give our office a call, 702-660-7000. So let's get into it. These choices that we can make to keep more of the money that we make or or otherwise? Well, first of all, let's say that that cruise is the October 19th through the 26th, not the 20th, because oh, uh, that absolutely. would be a very short cruise, not much of a choice there. So <laughs> we want to make sure that uh, it's October 19th out of Fort Lauderdale, and we will be coming back on the 26th. So looking forward to having you join us and um, meeting new destinations and, uh, and excitement and spending time together. So the choices that we make that affect the money that we keep... The, even the money that we can make, what, what, where do we start on this? Well, I think a good place to start is to start about the money managers. Is it Vanguard? Is it, uh, um, is it uh, Swab? Who is Black managing Rock, your JP money? Morgan. Black, all these yeah. people. You have so many choices uh, of where you're going to, Edward Jones. What do you do? How do you know where to choose? And Most people choose based on how much it's going to cost them. So the fee they advertise. Look, a lot of people look at what is the fee that the managing house is going to charge. Okay. And uh, there's been a race to the bottom in that field. Vanguard started it years ago, when, and they wanted to start with very low fees because fees were at 2 to 4%. And by you know a 2.5% fee, um, Jack Bogle said, would take 80% of a person's profits over a lifetime of trading. Wow. And he thought that that was immoral. And so he lowered fees, and most of his fees were under 1%. And he did very well, and people mocked him because he could have been a multi-billionaire, but he only ended up being a modest $80 million worth when he died in January okay. of this year. But, you know, he did a good service. Certainly. And a lot of people were able to, to actually make money instead of making just money for the money managers. So obviously, fees can take a huge, um, a huge portion off the top of any investment. Uh, the two percent taken off eighty percent of profits—that's amazing. Uh, even a small one percent can destroy seventeen um, percent of your profits over thirty years. Yes. Easily. Another so, thing people look at uh, is uh, the choice of uh, of of what is going to be invested, and um, they pick a money manager or they pick their own investments with if they become their own manager. And they're trying to pick which stock, which mutual fund, which EFT is going to do the best for them. Mm. And, you know, there's been so many articles written about this that you would be better off um, blindfolded and throwing a dart at the dartboard trying to pick your stocks than to try to pick it just on the information that's available to the general public. And the sad thing is, is that these paid money managers don't do a whole lot better. Mm. In fact, so, is sometimes they do worse. Isn't that crazy? And they take a fee for it as well. So, so the idea, 
And one of the reasons they don't do any better is that oftentimes they might join the board of the management firm and they might be managing so many things that your little stock just kind of gets brushed under the rug and it's not as near and dear to them as it is to you. And so they really don't. Uh, it just gets it brushed get along attention. with a bunch, of the, a bunch of the herd. Yeah. And that was uh, Jack, one of Jack Bogle's points, you know, not to try to beat the market, but to, you know, to go into some sort of index fund that, you know, is just going to follow long term. Uh, through through the results of everything. Well, and that's the other fallacy. Uh, people say they're trying to beat the market, but they fail to realize they are the market. Yeah. <laughs> you can't beat the market. Uh, yeah. And very, very few people even match the market hmm. um, because of the fees, the penalties, the taxes, and uh, just the, the the trading positions that you have to do in order to make something like that happen. So someone asked me the other day, they said, you know, I, I know understand the penalties that are involved in tax qualified plans, and I never think I would invest in one of those. But it, you know, I, I understand the value of the life insurance. You know, I like to have money uh, guaranteed in my life insurance. Would there be anything wrong with um, it, you know investing in some sort of fund with Vanguard, though, if I wanted a higher return? Well, you know, that, that's, that's again a speculation. It's a speculation. Because, sure. you know, um, you take a 30-year-old a um, healthy male and you put the same amount of money into a life insurance policy on them that's funded for high cash values, and you let them do that for 30 years, and then you let someone else the same age, same health, you know, take that same amount of money and invest in, a say, a mutual fund that's earning 6%. And when you end up, after the fees and, and the cost and, and whatnot, you actually end up almost equal with the cash value. The sad part is, is that the mutual fund has no death benefit, whereas you know, the, uh, the life insurance policy is going to have that liquid cash value and a death benefit. So now we've taken care of not only that person's needs, but their spouse or their legacy needs as well. Yeah, absolutely. So I cannot think of any case where it would be better to do uh, just mutual fund investments or index fund investments without the life insurance. Once you have a foundational life insurance, some some clients, you know, you, they do want to uh, speculate in that market return, and that is an option that they have available. Well, that brings up the other point is that um, this Burger King uh, McDonald's thing. Oh, yes. That, you know, we've got to get back to this. What does this? You know, McDonald's was n- known for spending millions of dollars on where to build their next restaurant. What? Where were their franchisees going to put their building? They spent millions of dollars doing this, and Burger King just sat back quietly and watched the research that McDonald's was doing. And when McDonald's built its restaurant, Burger King built one in an almost indistinguishable location like Mm. McDonald's did. They didn't have to spend a dime on the research. And Uh. that gives us a clue to see what we can do with our money. Because let's look at what people that are very successful are doing with their money. And the first thing they do with it is protect it. Mm -hmm. They protect it because they know that once they've made it, it's too late to protect it. They're already a target. Mm-hmm. They're either a target for volatility in the market or they're a target for a lawsuit or they're a target for some politician to come and bribe them. Otherwise, there's going to be laws passed against them and they're going to take their their money anyway. Mm-hmm. So what we can do is learn from them and realize that protection is the first thing that we need to do. And that protection comes um, in various forms, but financially, the best form is participating in life insurance. Because now we're building an asset that is going to take care of the second part of what wealthy people do with their money, and that is keep more of it. Mm -hmm. You know, Warren Buffett says that the first rule to making money is never lose it. And the second rule is don't forget rule number one. Very important rules. You don't want to forget those. And so we've got to protect it, and we've got to then keep more of it. And life insurance, when it's designed properly, the participating whole life insurance policy does both of those. Mm -hmm. And now we can move on to the other things that make people, uh, wealthy people, wealthy. And that is managing debt, Mm -hmm. because debt is not a dirty four-letter word like a lot of people that don't know how money works say it is. Debt is a 
financial tool that can be managed to create wealth for you. Um, again, going back to Warren Buffett, he says the best way to create equity is to leverage other people's money. That's debt. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so then what that allows us to do is then to invest. Now, there is no doubt, we've talked about this in previous podcasts, there's no doubts when there are opportunities that come along in our life where we could make a lot of money in a short period of time. But typically, those occur at times when money is very tight and nobody's lending money. Mm -hmm. Banks are tight, you know, like 2008 crash. Nobody loaned money, but there was all kinds of real estate available in the market for dirt cheap. And if you had access to money or capital at that time, you could have created a lot of equity in a very short period of time. Absolutely. And if you were invested at the market in the market at that time, your money would be tied up too because you wouldn't want to sell your position at a loss to go try to take another position that had lost money and make it back on that. It would just be changing one for another. In order to take an advantage of an opportunity like that, you have to have money that is guaranteed, that it was not tied to the market, that you can go and access to take those opportunities when they come. Not available to people that are just using traditional investments. If you have money guaranteed in your participating whole life insurance, it is a wonderful opportunity. You know, and, and as much as I disagree with George Soros politically, he has been brilliant about buying in downtimes. Mm -hmm. When nobody else has money, George Soros has fluent cash flow and is able to come in and buy up value below the cost that it normally would be. Mm -hmm. And that's how he's made his billions and billions of dollars. Jim Rogers is the same way. Um, and those are like negative black swans where they occur. And if you're in a position, you can take opportunity of it. But if you haven't protected and kept more of the money that you're making all along, then nobody's going to be willing to loan you the money because you're not a George Soros, a Warren Buffett, a Bill Gates, or a Donald Trump. They just don't give us money. Those people always have access to money because of their connections mm -hmm. to the banking industry. You and I don't. Yeah. So with any investment, and I think this is really a key that it comes down to, with any investment, there is always a possibility of loss. There is a risk that's associated with that. And in most, invest most investors today, um, financial professionals, they recognize that there's this risk and they try to compensate for it and account for it by risk management and different risk models that they're applying to it. <laughs> and they call it your risk tolerance. <laughs> that's right. So let's talk about risk that for a second. Risk tolerance is quite a bit different than your loss tolerance. So yes. let's, let's, let's delve into this a little more. So risk tolerance uh, basically depends on what kind of lifestyle you've led. Are you someone that flits around from job to job and, uh, and uh, dabbles in this and dabbles in that, and buys stock and, and sells it and turns around and gets involved in real estate and sells that? And, and maybe you lose money here and lose money there and make a little money here and make a little money there. Then you would be classified according to the the typical financial planner as a someone that is a, a capable of, of bearing a high risk tolerance because your lifestyle is not stable. Mm -hmm. It's kind of just going all over the place, all right? Whereas someone that was steadily uh, and diligently worked hard and, and kept, you know, 10, 15, 20% of their income very diligently put it away in something that was secure, like CDs, life insurance, um, maybe a Roth, uh, you would be considered a very, a, a, a very low risk tolerance because you don't want to be exposed to anything that upsets your apple cart. Mm -hmm. Now, what we can do is we can't rate you on your risk tolerance because the licensing laws about financial planners say that's their little domain. But who wants to risk, to risk being rated in something like that? So our question to you is what is your loss tolerance? Are you willing to lose $10 to make 20 in the next year? Possible. How about 100000 to make 200000 by the end of the year? Would you be willing to give up that money today to make that happen tomorrow? 
Yeah. And and remember the 200,000 here is only possible. It's only a possibility. So, so you, either the the giving up is certain. Yes. So that's the question that we have to ask. That really defines where your comfort zone is. And so when we talk about a life insurance policy, we're always talking about what's affordable and comfortable to you. That's talking about your loss tolerance. What would happen, we often ask, is if a, if $1,000 disappeared out of your, your monthly income, would it make you go bankrupt? Mm. If it doesn't make you go bankrupt, what would happen if you gave that up every month for the next 10 years to show a guaranteed, not a possibility, of having more money than what you started with? That's a lot different than that's any a huge possible difference. investment. Yes. And that's why life insurance is not considered an investment because of the guarantee. It's NASA. not how much do you have to give up in order to what you get. It's a matter of how much are you willing to forfeit in your lifestyle right now so you can have a guaranteed greater amount in the future. That is key. That is key. So following what Burger King did and following McDonald's, we have that same opportunity to follow what wealthy people are doing with their money. They're protecting it, keeping more of it, managing that, not just getting rid of it like a lot of financial gurus are out there raving about. Because debt managed properly creates wealth. Yeah. That's really what an investment is. Yes, it is. It's, it's the a, management it's a form of, of debt. debt. Absolutely. And it you know, an investment can lose money and in that case the creditor went bad on you. You can think of it as a debt where the creditor went bad. That's the correct. Lender, the lender took the loss. So returning a little bit to the investment aspect here, investment world, you, you mentioned earlier that uh, investors or the investment companies, management firms, always compete on fees, <laughs> the fees rate, and it tends to be a promotional item for them. We have seen that taken to the extreme here in recent years where fund managers are slashing rates all the way to zero for a certain period of time, or even negative fees, which means they pay you to put your money with them. So why in the world would someone pay you to invest with them? And the key is they don't do it forever. <laughs> there is a time limit on this thing. And there's also a dollar limit based on, so, so they'll only pay this up to a certain amount based on how much uh, money they are successful in recruiting. So and that's what they're doing it for is to bring their fund from uh, maybe a small fry up to a middle-sized fry because they really want to get bigger as a company yes. and have more money under management. Yeah, so it's a, it's a promotional thing. So how does that pan out, though, for an investor that might want to, say, get in, get this negative fee, and maybe they could, um, you know, is there a time commitment that they have to do this for? Well, tip, it's all worded in the, in, the, in the favor of the managing company because there is no reward for being the first one to uh, give your money over to these managers to make money. Okay. It, it's based on a time factor. If we, say, collect $100 million over the next six months, um, we'll pay everyone, you know, five basis points for what they put in. But... If we collect two hundred million over the next six months, then nobody gets anything because we made our quota. Yeah, and five basis points—it's not that much when you when you look at it. Uh, that means point zero five percent. So the one basis point would be point zero one percent, one hundredth of one percent. And then, of course, after they reach their quota that they set up, then the fees go back to whatever they were charging beforehand, and you can actually lose money then again on fees. There you go. And, of course, then you still have the risk of the investment, whatever, exactly. the, whatever's behind that fund. So it's just another way to promote an investment. Uh, you see these promotions out there all the time. Can we call that a marketing form. ploy? There we go. <laughs> So you can either dismiss it or you can uh, can look at it as, as the promotion that it is helping those companies to grow. Well, you know, an another thing about fees is that a lot of times these brokerage houses, these many managers won't charge a fee per se, but that doesn't mean that you aren't being charged a fee every time they change a trade. Mm. Because each of the stocks or mutual funds or whatever is being traded in that portfolio, when they roll over to a different fund... There is a fee that's charged there by uh, maybe it's not charged by Edwards Jones or you know mm -hmm. or uh, Swab, but it's charged by 
not broker, a management fee, the, but a trading fee? A trading fee. Mm. And those add up. And I know that Forbes has written a, a really interesting article about that, how those fees can really just crucify someone's investment plan, and they aren't even aware it's happening. Interesting. So I always have to read the fine print on those type of risk uh, investments. With that, and that's the beauty of having the participating whole life insurance. The contract on those things is very thin. There's not, you know, it's a unilateral contract. You do get true guarantees. There's not a lot of wiggle room for the insurance company when the contract is written plain and simple like that. And you can actually read it and understand what's going on. Big difference there. You know, and, and, and we can throw all this typical investment advice down the tubes if we really go back to the tr- traditional financial advice that was so um, germane for making America what it was. And that is, how can I finance my house, mm-hmm. my property, my farm, and how can I finance a whole life insurance policy so that I have money when I can't work as hard and as long as I'm doing right now? There you go. Cover those two foundations and your life will be much more substantial and so financially stable and secure than 99% of the uh, of the people that are chasing the market investments. So there you have it. Burger King versus McDonald's. Burger King outwitted McDonald's and just followed their research. You outwit the rest of the population by following what wealthy people have done and are doing with their money, and you will end up profitable, wealthy, and being able to um, have a much longer life before you outlive your money. You are listening to Wealth Talks. We'll be back next week. Have a great week.